Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is friction brakes. Our objective is to discuss friction brakes used to bring a de-energized motor to a rapid halt and secure it. We'll differentiate between fail-safe and non-fail-safe brakes and discuss common mechanical and electrical characteristics of friction brakes. A de-energized motor ordinarily free spins to a halt. Friction brakes, in contrast, are used to bring a de-energized motor to a rapid halt. Friction brakes can therefore provide a faster and more precise means of stopping a motor. Additionally, friction brakes serve to secure the shaft and applied load of a de-energized motor. Applications for friction brakes include lifting and securing objects against the force of gravity and preventing the applied load from movement during power loss. Friction brakes are sometimes called magnetic brakes or mechanical brakes. Friction brakes are astoundingly similar to those found in automobiles in that a shoe or pad physically applies a force on a disc or a wheel mounted on a shaft. In contrast, dynamic or regenerative braking and electric or electronic braking use electrical means to decelerate the motor, similar to a generator. We'll discuss these deceleration techniques in much later lectures. Friction brakes are rated according to the braking torque, which is ordinarily equal to or greater than the full load torque of the motor is intended to stop. This means if the brake is applied to an energized motor, the rotor will lock. Locked rotor conditions beget inrush current and the motor will experience a sustained overload. A properly configured motor starter therefore ensures the brakes are released when the motor is energized and applied when the motor is de-energized. Long story short, motor on, brake off, brake on, motor off. Friction brakes come with two different designations and their description says it all. Fail-safe brakes require power to disengage the brake. Otherwise, spring pressure applies the brakes. Fail-safe brakes are also called spring-set, electrically released brakes. They're additionally known as power-off or safety brakes. Non-fail-safe brakes require power to apply the brake. Otherwise, spring pressure disengages the brakes. Non-fail-safe brakes are also called spring return, electrically set brakes. They're additionally known as power on brakes. This lecture deals with fail-safe, spring set, electrically released brakes. This means the brakes are instantly applied when the brake coil is de-energized or in the case of a power failure, bringing the shaft to a fast positive stop. Spring set, electrically released brakes, as the name implies, use spring pressure to apply a force to a friction surface either a shoe or a pad, which comes into contact with a disc or wheel mounted to the motor shaft. When the brake coil is energized, a linear electrical actuator known as a solenoid, similar to those solenoids found in relays, contactors, and solenoid-operated valves, pulls the friction surface away from the shaft and the motor is free to spin. Friction brakes often fit on the bell end of a motor and sometimes feature a manual release lever. The shaft should turn freely when the brake is released and, provided the brake coil is not energized, should be locked when applied. The friction pads are consumable items, ordinarily made of molded or woven asbestos with high friction resistance, bonded or riveted to steel backplates. Maintenance procedures may call for the inspection and replacement of the sacrificial friction pads and cleaning out any accumulated brake dust. Vertically mounted motors are especially susceptible to this. As previously mentioned, friction brakes are rated according to the braking torque, which is ordinarily equal to or greater than the full load torque of the motor it is intended to stop. If the full load torque of the motor is not explicitly stated in the motor nameplate, it can be determined using a derivation of the mechanical power formula discussed extensively in the Mechanical Power, Torque and Rotational Speed lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel, this time incorporating a dimensionless service factor figure that ensures the brake can do the job. Note torque is in units of newton meters, mechanical power is in units of watts, rotational speed is in units of RPM, and the constant 9.55 is a necessary unit conversion. For example, consider a 2 kilowatt motor with a rated speed of 1720 RPM. What is the braking torque necessary to stop this motor if the brake is to incorporate a 1.15 surface factor? Pause the lecture and try this on your own. Substituting the necessary values and accounting for proper units, we find that the brake should be able to supply at least 12.8-ish newton meters of counter torque if it is to do the job. Moving beyond the mechanical aspects of friction brakes, let's discuss the electrical characteristics. 
Full voltage starters incorporating spring set electrically released brakes ordinarily wire the brake coil line to line downstream of the motor starter. Brake coils, since they use a solenoid to disengage the friction brake, are often represented schematically as one would a solenoid of a solenoid operated valve. Note the brake solenoid occurs in the primary schematic and not in the pilot. This ensures the brake is disengaged when the motor is energized and the brake is applied when the motor is de-energized. When the primary M contactor closes, the brake coil is simultaneously energized with the motor. The brake disengages and the motor rotates as intended. When the primary M contacts open, the brake coil is simultaneously de-energized with the motor. The spring set brake is applied and the motor is brought to a rapid halt as intended. Friction brakes, like motors, are often dual voltage. It is important that the brake coils for a dual voltage brake are properly connected for the applied system voltage if the brake is to operate as intended. Ordinarily, the connection diagram appears in the brake nameplate, along with other pertinent data. The connection diagram for this particular set of brake coils shows the two coils would be wired in parallel for a low voltage configuration. B1 to B3, B4 to B2. The low voltage configuration would see group B1, B3 and group B2, B4 connected line to line L1 to L2. A high voltage configuration would necessitate B4 be tied to B3. The high voltage configuration would see B1 and B2 connected line to line L1 to L2. Note that brake coils are intended to operate at full voltage. For this reason, reduced voltage starters, a topic we'll discuss in later lectures, necessitate different brake configurations if they are to operate as intended. Note that fail-safe, spring-set, electrically released brakes are applied instantly during power loss, as well as single phasing events in which one of the two phases energizing the braking solenoids are lost. Single phasing and locked rotor conditions by themselves beget large current. Imagine both events occurring simultaneously. It is for this reason overloads are incorporated with motor starters to protect the motor from sustained overloads. All right, this about wraps up our brief introduction of friction brakes. We'll be making use of these devices in later lectures in jogging or inching applications when a motor is only momentarily energized without the use of a holding circuit. Friction brakes make faster and more precise movements possible for these applications, as well as secure the shaft and applied load in the event of power loss. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at friction brakes. We discussed applications fitting their use and their mechanical and electrical aspects. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.